So it's Monday morning. Just arrived here at the hangar. Our intention was to run the Mustang again, but it's crappy outside. It's cold. It's rainy. Yeah, not doing it today. We'll see what happens on Wednesday. Hey, I'm down at the hangar. Yeah, it's too rainy and nasty to go out and work on the Mustang, do anything with it. So I'm turning back to the bomber and show you what I've got to do today. Hold on. Okay, this is a supercharger control valve, and it goes up on top of the uh, on top of the back of the accessory housing. This is the gasket for it, and this is the drive unit for it. So my job is to get this installed. We found uh, some bad seals. Let's see if they're not that one. Let me show you this one. Found a bad seal, and that just wasn't going to fly. So we got some new seals and gaskets. And all these do is redirect the flow to the supercharger so you can either get a, a low volume blow or you can get a high volume blow. You generally use it above 10,000 feet. Um, and uh, so let me get this installed and I'll show you how we go about it on the way. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the pad that this goes on and I'm going to put some grease on both sides of this gasket and that will help in the sealing. And then we'll go up and install the gasket. We'll put this on, and then we'll get the control cable hooked up to it. So stand by. All right, let's get this cleaned up and uh, we'll get the new gasket on there. One of the things is This kind of has to go together several pieces at the same time and you have to get this particular nut you have to get this pretty well started before you put anything else on there otherwise you can't get the nut on there And these brackets, the, the studs with the bracket, take a shorter nut than the other ones to have the right number of threads showing. And as you can see, this one's shorter than that one. There's so limited space in here. This used to be done by 20 year olds in the war. 21 year olds, whatever. And they were much limber than I am. So the first one I want to do is this one here so I can get the wrench in and out. The rest will be a combination of wrenches and ratchets. But this one is fairly important to do first. Get going with the rest of them. I should have somebody take a video of me climbing in and out of this space.
I'll just bring these down to snug for now. Okay, now comes the fun part. This is what they call a Simmons Drive. And this is what talks from the cockpit down to this valve to make it shift. So now I need to do, you've got that. And you've got this little device that slips in here and it it can move all kinds of ways. Um, it's quite a unique th thing. So I'll figure out where we're at because this only turns about uh, 30 degrees or something like that. So I have to make sure that the cockpit uh, lever is in the position for me to install that. So stand by. All right, so Bob is going to rotate this so I know what direction this is turning. All right, Bob, go ahead. So he's going to go from low blow to high blow, so it turns that direction. All right. All right, go ahead and go all the way back to low blow. All right. So that means that our valve is going that direction. All right, did it drop in the gate? Yeah. All right, thank you. So now I just make sure need to make sure that that valve is turned all the way that way. All right. So now get a couple of bolts ready. I need to be able to line everything kind of up by eye. We'll slide this into here. All right, then we'll bring this up here. All right, there's that, there's that. And then I gotta just wiggle this in, change my light so I can see. Now we'll test it before I bolt anything down. Yeah, what's the best way to do this? I really need it up here. Hey Bob, are you in a position that you can run that? Can you run that from high blow or low blow to high blow? Yeah, see, make sure it locks into the gate. Uh, all right, drop it into low. Perfect. All right, thank you, sir. All right, now we'll put all the attaching hardware on. All 
hit one down. Okay, that one. And that one. So I'm sitting down here at the hangar and I come to the realization that there's a lot of you people out there that enjoy what we're doing here. And I just wanted to say, I give a quick shout out and thanks for the new subscribers that I've got. And hopefully I can keep bringing you content that you enjoy. If you've got something you want to know or see, please uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, I, I read them all and I try to respond to them all. So again, a huge thank you for uh, what you do for me. Have a great day. I'm standing up here on the balcony and looking at the airplane that we've been assembling for a little over a decade now. And it's just amazing to me where we are at the in the timeline of this process and trying to figure out what we had and what we have left to do. Uh, it arrived on five flatbed trailers 12 years ago and we had to figure it out. We've got all the books. We've got all kinds of input from other invader groups. It's been great. Uh, using their knowledge base to get where we are. So we're getting really, we're getting closer. We still have a lot to do. And uh, hopefully in the next little bit, you'll see some big changes coming onto the airplane. This is the uh, original Douglas iteration of a fuel feed into the carburetors for these engines. And while we had one, we needed another, and our good friends in Oklahoma gave us, it, gave us this one, but it had some damage to it and had to be straightened out. So Jan is building a little tester that he can bolt on there, and we can pressure test this. And if it passes the muster, then we can get this out, get it plated, and we can get it installed on the other engine. Let me show you where, what it looks like on the other on the engine that's in there. So that's what this looks like right up there when we get it installed. So we need we don't have one on the other engine, and we will uh, endeavor to get it cleaned up. And then what's going to happen right down here on this firewall? You see these backup brackets um, on this side will be fuel flow transducers or transmitters is the correct terminology. So we're working on an installation for those. So the system will be that hose right there. That comes off of the firewall after the tanks fill it. It goes up to the fuel pump, which is that device right there. The hose come out of here. We'll go down to the fuel flow transducer and then it'll go up and feed that fitting up in there. So that's, so these are the fuel flow transducers, one for each engine. And uh, as soon as Jan gets the brackets all built up, those will go in and pretty soon we're going to be able to test the fuel system. And once we get the fuel system tested, there's going to be a whole lot of stuff happening all at the same time. 
we're not going to test the fuel system until the engines are pretty close to being able to run. So that means propellers, oil, a whole raft of things. Uh, because once you put fuel in the fuel bags, they have to remain wet with fuel or they start going bad. We don't want that. Spent way too much money on getting the the uh, fuel bladders from uh, Eagle Fuel Cells in Wisconsin. They were great people to work with, and they're beautiful tanks. You, if you've been a watcher of my channel, you may have noticed that when we put those in. So anyway, all right, well, I'll uh, get along from here. Okay, so uh, our fitting for the carburetor has been tested. We got no leaks. That's awesome blossom. Got 50 pounds in there. It'll be a whole lot less of that in operation. So, all right, we'll get this thing dry and blasted. <laughs> Hold on. Blew our cap off. <laughs> Blew the plug out. <laughs> I get, I bet. 